the British Lancaster was the most potent bomber of World War II, helping to turn the cities of Germany into dust and win the war. It spearheaded the Allied strategic bombing campaign in crucial nighttime missions, but the cost was huge, as thousands died on the ground and in the air. Out of approximately 7,000 Lancasters, almost half did not return from their missions, and the life expectancy of its crews was just 21 missions before being lost in action. Thanks to the extremely advanced and top-secret technology of the time, the Lancaster gained its reputation as the most fearsome heavy bomber. Some devices were so closely guarded that they had thermite bombs as self-destruct mechanisms, so the crew could activate them before bailing out, ensuring there was no chance of the technology falling into enemy hands, but more on that in a bit. The Lancaster had a crew of seven, pilot, flight engineer, navigator, bomb aimer, wireless operator, and two gunners. At the very front was the bomb aimer, who also had a machine gun in case of danger, and the skipper was on the port side. Next to him was the flight engineer, and behind a curtain sat the navigator to have light on his charts. Behind him was the wireless operator, further back was the main spar, mid-upper gunner, and finally the tail gunner. A terrifying fact is that the tail gunner had the least chance of survival, as he was physically separated from his parachute and the rest of the crew, making his evacuation path the longest and most difficult in the case of a plane going down. Additionally, the general exit route for the crew was challenging because the Lancaster had a smaller hatch than other aircraft, making it extremely difficult to exit in a hurry while carrying a parachute. As a result, the crew of stricken Lancasters had only a 15% successful bailout rate, which is terrible compared to the American bombers, which had a 50% rate. All seven crew members had to perform their functions perfectly synchronized to ensure the mission's success and their survival. The missions they embarked on were mostly nighttime long-range bombings of heavily defended strategic cities and were extremely dangerous. This incredibly dangerous job was carried out by crews with an average age of just 22 years. For protection, the Lancaster was armed with eight 303 caliber Browning machine guns and three hydraulically powered turrets. However, the 303 caliber didn't prove extremely effective against German fighter planes. Production of the Lancaster wasn't an easy task. It consisted of 55,000 different parts, requiring approximately half a million engineering operations. It was made in five sections in different factories, so it could be later put together quicker and simpler. This way, about 150 Lancasters were built every month. It had everything the crew wanted. Power, speed, maneuverability, and enormous weight-carrying capacity. It weighted approximately 36,000 pounds and could carry almost the same weight in bombs and fuel. Depending on the distance to the target and the required fuel, Lancaster could carry up to a 22,000 pound bomb payload. The Lancaster's bomb bay was 33 feet long, enabling it to carry some of the heaviest bombs used during the war. The most common were the high capacity cookie bombs known for their massive blast effects. These came in various sizes, including 4,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds, and 12,000 pounds. These bombs were used primarily to create large-scale destruction, destroying buildings and infrastructure. To complement its explosive payload, it could also drop incendiary bombs, these bombs contained flammable materials like magnesium and phosphorus, creating firestorms in enemy cities. Then there were tall boy bombs, weighing 12,000 pounds and designed to penetrate deep into the earth before detonating, making them ideal for destroying submarine pens, V-weapon sites and battleships. The tall boy's design allowed it to cause devastating underground explosions collapsing structures from below, taking destructive power to the next level 
The Lancaster could also carry the Grand Slam Bomb, a colossal 22,000-pound weapon, the largest conventional bomb used during the war. One of the most innovative bombs used by the Lancaster was the Bouncing Bomb, developed for the famous Dambusters raid, Operation Chastise. These cylindrical bombs were engineered to skip across water surfaces and detonate against dam walls. This breached dams in Germany's Ruhr Valley, disrupting industrial production and hydroelectric power. By 1943, the Avro Lancaster was equipped with several advanced and top-secret technologies. The Mark 14 vector-based bombsite, now recognized as the first modern bombsite, allowed the bomb aimer to input information at the start of the flight, with a computer automatically calculating the trajectory of the bombs and making adjustments during missions. Then, there was the HA2S radar, which could navigate and identify targets even in poor visibility by creating a map of the terrain below. To protect this crucial technology, the HA2S radar was equipped with thermite charges that could be detonated to destroy the system if the plane was at risk of capture. There were also similar navigation and targeting systems that were ahead of their time. By this time, an all-out offensive was launched against Germany, with 24-hour bombing missions being carried out. By day, the Americans bombed, and by night, the British. The Avro Lancaster was powered by four Rolls-Royce Merlin engines. Each Merlin V12 liquid-cooled piston engine produced up to 1,280 horsepower. Known for their reliability, these engines enabled the Lancaster to cruise at 200 miles per hour at 15,000 feet and reach top speeds of 275 miles per hour. With six fuel tanks holding 2,154 gallons, the Lancaster had a range of 2,530 miles with a 7,000 pound bomb load. The crew spent the evening before the mission anxiously awaiting mission details. First, they would learn the type of bombs they would carry, then the amount of fuel which would indicate whether it was a long or short flight. Before each mission, they wrote a letter and left it in their locker in case they did not return, which would be sent to their families. Just before the mission, the crews would attend a briefing to be informed about the targets and details of the mission. Tension gradually increased as zero hour approached and final preparations were made. When they reached the enemy coast, the real danger began. Since enemy fighters were not as active at night, they did not pose as much of a threat. However, deadly anti-aircraft fire was instilling fear in the bones of the crews. They flew through dense barrages of German flak batteries with shells exploding all around, sending deadly shrapnel through the air. Crews said this was the scariest experience flying helplessly through a cloud of shells, just waiting for one to directly hit the aircraft or shrapnel to pierce through and hit someone. The last 1530 seconds of final calculations before dropping the bombs felt like an eternity, and the excitement and tension made no one think at that moment that the bombs might kill hundreds of innocent civilians in German cities. Then the command would be heard, bombs out. Immediately, the weight difference was felt as bombs suddenly disappeared. The pilot would quickly turn the aircraft and head back, hoping for a safe return, but the danger was not over, as the journey home was still fraught with peril, with German fighter pilots potentially lurking in the darkness, and the crew could not let their guard down for a second. They could see aircrafts beside them in flames and soon parachutes being deployed helplessly watching their comrades and wondering if they would be next. Every mission could be the last for the seven-member crew. Few completed and survived a full tour of 30 operations. 50% of bomber crews were killed, and when adding accidents during training, the statistic becomes six out of every 10. Regarding the enemy, these missions were responsible for killing thousands, mostly civilians. Hundreds of thousands were wounded and left homeless, and cities were turned to dust. 